visit memphisfoodwinefestival.org. Zach Kleiman is the general manager of the Memphis Grizzlies. First appearance in studio. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. All right, Good so to be here. we want to get to know Zach Kleiman. Where did you grow up? Grew up in uh, in Chicago. Okay. Grew up in the, the north side of Chicago, uh, Lincoln Park. Uh, went to school on the south side. Went to University of Chicago Lab, K through 12. Was there forever. Made that commute up and down Lakeshore Drive for, for quite some time. And uh, that's that's where this uh, where this journey began. Okay, so you leave Chicago after yep. high school and you go mm-hmm. to college where? Went to USC, the the California USC. Not that we should have to differentiate, but well, you're that's probably California. around the uh, Reggie Bush era. I was right right around then, right around then, right around. Uh, okay, I, I caught. I wasn't there for the national championship. That was 05. But they were I still came in awesome after. at it football. Was, it was painful my first year. My first year, uh, John David Booty at quarterback. <laughs> We were going in. We, we were one win away from going to the national title game. We go into oh. UCLA, and we lose 13-9. to nine. Oh, no. It was the, the, uh, it the was worst. Terrible. I hate to bring it, up it bad was memories. Terrib- it was a terrible game. So are you, it was awful. Are you at USC for four years? I'm at USC for four years. How does a kid yeah. from Chicago end up at USC? You know, I, I, I wanted to take a step back. I wanted to go somewhere else. I was weighing, you know, USC, Michigan, maybe somewhere in Northern California. I went out there. I, I have no better reason other than – you know, wanted a, a good sports environment. Um, it was actually a, a decent run of basketball when uh-huh. I was at USC. Um, but I, I appreciated the vibe when I was out there. Got a good, got a good feeling, and I, and I ran with it. Did you know anybody? Did you have any friends or family? You know, I, I didn't decide it based off of that. I had a couple of friends who ended up going, but they, I think they decided after I did. Um, oh, okay. They became better you know, hi, high school friends. They became better friends when I was at USC. Wait, so you were out there, OJ Mayo. I was. You were there when O.J. Mayo was we, at USC. We, we had a good, an interesting run when I was at USC. I was the same year as Taj Gibson. So we, ah. had, we had Taj the entire time. Yep. Year one was the tail end of Gabe Pruitt and Nick Young. Wow. Year two was O.J. Mayo. Year three was DeMar DeRozan. Oh, that's so we, incredible. It was, it, was a, it was an interesting USC era, but there, there was talent there. Sure. It All was, right. So most people that go out to L.A., mm-hmm. especially when they have grown up in cold weather, mm-hmm. stay there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and especially yeah. if you go to college there, yeah. you just settle down and get a job out there. But you mm-hmm. did not. I, I, coming from Chicago, coming from the Midwest, I, I wanted to mor- work my way back to that end of the U.S., you know, potentially east. I knew, as, as ridiculous as the sound, that I really wanted to work in the NBA, you know. And, and to follow that path over time, the, the law firms that deal with sports work, I knew I was going to law school, you yep. know, towards the end of, of college. And... The firms that do that work are, are primarily in New York. So I figured, you know, I'll go to a, a Duke or something like that. And th- thankfully, that came together. Uh, and opportunities manifested themselves to then go to Proskauer, the firm that I worked at in, in New York, that they're outside counsel to the NBA. So okay. I, my, my thought was I'll, get, I'll hopefully be able to get there. Thankfully, that came together. Um, I'll try to do work in the, you know, kind of the sports space. And the, the goal, though, was, I, you know, I did internships along the way. The goal was try to work my way back to a team. Now, was the goal to be in the NBA because you grew up a massive Bulls fan or did you like when did the love for the NBA become where you wanted to go because I know you you grew up liking the Bears you grew up liking the Cubs Mm -hmm. was the NBA big on your radar as a child it it was so I I was I was a diehard Bulls fan growing up it it was the Michael Jordan era in Chicago Um, I watched every single game you know it was life you know life and death right it, it, it was devastating when the Bulls would lose a game you know, at that point, and that, and that was a right. rare occurrence at that time. <laughs> you know, I, I played. I wasn't good. You know, I, I played in high school. Uh, I could shoot it a little bit. I, I wasn't getting off the bench. But I, I grew up around basketball. I loved the game. I still, you know, love to play. You know, I'm, again, I'm not very good at basketball. But, but you like it. I grew up around the game, yes. and I've always appreciated it. Okay, so once you leave USC and yeah. you're going to go to law school, now do you yeah. go into the workforce or do you go straight to law school? I went straight through. I went straight through. So, yeah, gr- graduate USC. Uh, you know, I'm um, interning, I'm, uh, you know, applying for different, you know, different law schools there. And I, I decided to go to Duke from there. And that that's straight through. Okay. And this is how, now, now there was the internship with the late, you had an internship with yeah. the Lakers. That was during your time at USC? Yeah. So what, when I was at USC, the summer after my sophomore year, I, I went to New York, actually. I lived in New York for the summer, um, interned for Glenn Grunwald, who now works with us here. Ah. Um, that was in, in basketball, ops, front office work. I, Nothing groundbreaking. I mean, I was compiling right. mock drafts. I was passing out water bottles in the draft room. Sure. Not, not terribly groundbreaking stuff, but 
Um, it, it was the first taste of it, and I, I wanted to try to parlay that to something when I went back to school. So, um, you know, got, got the Knicks folks to, you know, make a couple calls over to the Lakers, went through their interview process there. And I, I was a PR intern for the Lakers for two years. I was there, you know, one day a week in the office, would drive from, uh, from USC's campus over to El Segundo, and then every single game night for, for two years. And ha- happened to be two good years there. Wow. Yeah. All right. And then I suppose, now I'm putting this all together, when you're at Duke, yep. that's how you end up with Charlotte yeah. and Rich Cho, who's now also in this front it, office. Exactly, exactly. So I, I got to know Rich actually back when I was a PR intern for the Lakers. I would hand him a scouting credential when he was coming there to games. So fast forward a couple of years at Duke, um, you know, we, I was running our whatever sports and entertainment law society, what whatever it's called. Uh, and, you know, you're trying to light up interesting lunchtime events. So I, I, I saw that, you know, Rich had taken the gig in Charlotte, shot him a note and said, hey, you know, we're, we'd love to have you in sometime. Um, came in, you know, good lunchtime talk, all that. And he was looking for an intern at the time. And I said, you know, listen, I've, I've already got something lined up for the summer. I was going to work at this firm in New York. But if I could convince you to, you know, let me come out there a couple of days a week to work my last year of law school and the last year of law school, is, you know, you, you got right. a little more time on your hands. Um, I lined up a ridiculous program where I would get up 5 a.m. or something on Monday. I would take the two and a half hour train. I would take a train to a bus to the arena in Charlotte. I would work Mondays. I paid out of pocket. to The whole thing was on pay. I paid out of pocket to stay in a hotel in Charlotte on Monday nights. I'd work Tuesday and then I would take the train back. And that, that was law school. You know, my, my last year there. Wow. It, it was, I, I knew at that point that, you know, I was going on this path to work at Proskauer to work in the, you know, kind of the sports legal space, but I really wanted to work my way back to a team. And, and over time, I really wanted to work my way back to front office work. And it was important for me to get actual hands on front office work that wasn't just passing out water bottles. Right. So, how do you end up, let's fast forward to how yeah. you end up here in Memphis, yeah. because when you originally come to Memphis, you're hired as team counsel, uh, yep. who, unfortunately for us, Roser and I both had to deal with you a lot <laughs> because you had, to, you had to be well-versed in uh, radio uh, contracts. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked you guys didn't want to have me on the show then. <laughs> that that, that would have been fun. <laughs> so that's how we got to know you three years mm-hmm, ago. Mm-hmm. But you, when you came here, you were new too. I was. And I as, was. as team counsel, how did you end up in Memphis? Who did you know here, or did you just apply for a job? Yeah, or? so it, it was one of those things that just happened to come out of uh, out of left field. I, I knew I'd never been to the state of Tennessee before. You know, probably the the closest experience was maybe you know Durham. You know, living in right. North Carolina. But um, you know, I I was working on a deal at Proskauer. There's a, a league wide financing uh, mechanism. You know, the, the league goes out. They can take out borrowing on better terms. You know, for teams than they could otherwise get if they just go to a bank on their own. I administer. This is boring stuff, but yeah. I administered that on behalf of a bunch of different teams. The Grizzlies were one of the relationships that I happened to manage. Ah. Over the course of that, I got to know the Grizzlies management team. At the end of that deal, I got a you know a note saying, "Hey, you know what? We, we've got an opening here. Let us know if you want to interview." I said, "You know, typically we'd look for someone with five or six years of experience. You've been there a couple of years, but you know," and I said. Well, let me know what you guys need. I'm, I'm interested. Was your other job, uh, I know when you were describing what you had to do for the Grizzlies, that you yep. were saying it's boring stuff. Was the job boring? It was, it was, uh, it was a grind. <laughs> it was a grind, and, you know, that, that doesn't stop. But it was, uh, you know, your typical New York law firm associate working around the clock. You right. know, when, you know, when the Sterling, you know, situation broke, I mean, I, I was pulling all-nighters on Wednesdays. Oh, no. You know, you're, you're looking all, all ends of that. It, it was interesting yeah. work. It was genuinely interesting work. Sure. Well, so you are you yeah. are dealing with sports. So that, yeah, yeah, at least sale, you're sale scratching. Of a football team, yeah. MLS expansions. You know, it, it's interesting stuff that makes you think critically and right. makes you be incredibly organized and certainly instills, you know, a work ethic that, you know, we, we've really prioritized trying to implement and put in place here. But no, no it's... That was that, that's New York law firm life. So as you had worked up here, you were team counsel, and then you yep. end up becoming assistant GM because mm-hmm. now you are a valued uh, asset in the front office. Now, fast forward, you get the job this summer, and immediately people say yep. he is young. People say, what does he know about mm-hmm. basketball, right? How can right? Yep. And then you assemble this front office, which yep. is Rich Cho, somebody you'd worked with before, Glenn Grunwald. Yep. Um, uh, Tayshaun, Tayshaun Prince is elevated. Chris, Chris Macris is yep kept on and so i think that you and one of the things that jason uh wexler has said when he's been on this is 
he knows what he doesn't know, right? Yeah. Like, he, like you, you're not walking around attempting to right. pretend that you're an NBA lifer, mm -hmm. right? Um, but you were very uh, methodical about putting together the staff, mm -hmm. you know, and this front office and these people that you wanted to have and trust around you and some of kind of everything, like the old school basketball guys you, you and need whatever. Everything. Okay. everything matters. And when so now comes the moment where you are elevated to being – the general manager of the team, right? Mm -hmm. Robert Pear or Jason Wexler, or whoever calls you and says, hey, we want you to, we're, we're, we're moving on and we want you to be the GM of the team. Are you, th are you at that point nervous? Are you at that point thinking, I'm, I've been waiting for this my whole life, yeah. even though I'm young, I'm, 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 I'm totally prepared for yeah. this? I'm, I'm, you know, obviously young, but man, in my head, I'm just excited. You I'm excited, just... fortunate, you know, to have the opportunity. You know, a major thanks and, and a lot of credit, I think, should go out to, to Robert on that. Right. You know, to, to take the, uh, you know, to be willing to take the risk of someone who's, you know, doesn't, you know, may, maybe hasn't been doing this, you know, quite as long and say, no, I, I trust you to go ahead and do this. You know, right. I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for his support. And I wouldn't be here if he and I, you know, didn't have the same vision for, you know, for what we're trying to build here. And that very much extends to, to Wax. Uh, Jason Wexler yep. as well. So you are sitting in the room, and one of the first things you have to do is the GM. Yep. And I can only imagine that you've got these plans as to what you <laughs> want to do with the Grizzlies. <laughs> and the moment that it says the number two pick yep. is the Grizzlies, those plans, everything changes. Mm -hmm. Everything changes for all of us. Yep. You know, the second it comes up, number two, at that moment you're in that room, you are the new guy. I can't yep. imagine you have – a lot of relationships in the room by that point, not not really, right? I mean, because because it's a hodgepodge. Yeah. Some of them are coaches, some of them are GMs, mm -hmm. some of them whoever is representing. But you're in that room. What happens when it comes when you see that combination, and you know it's yours? What is running through your head? I, I was I was thrilled. I was thrilled. I mean, you you have, you know, you make your own luck, but you know you. you you need things to bounce your way, you know, at times as well. And, you know, for, for the lottery to play out the way that it did for us to land that number two pick, um, we, we were always, you know, very significant believers in, in Ja and what he could bring, you know, bring to the table. So to, to land in that position, you know, it certainly helped facilitate, it certainly helped kick off everything that we were trying to build. Um, and and the, you couldn't ask for, for a better person, you know, than John. I'm, I couldn't be more excited for, for Memphis, for our fans to see what, what this kid's going to bring to the table, but just getting to know him over the course of the summer. He, he could not be more bought into this city. He couldn't be more bought into the values that we want to be about. Um, we're, we're, th we're thrilled that that played, you know, that things happened to bounce our way that day. All right, so you're very deliberate about the coach thing too. Yep. It took a long time, yep. and so the first thing is, why did it take so long, and why Taylor Jenkins? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think you can see on, on one hand we've, we've been very patient in how we've played out certain things, and on the other hand, you know, you can see it, it, you know, when free agency period kind of kicked off. However, it, we made an inordinate amount of trades in a very short period of time. Right. Many of which, you know, you, it's not – yeah, you play out a ton of different scenarios in advance, but you can't, you can't possibly comprehend everything that could come your way. And there are, you, you have to find the right balance between being – patient in situations that warrant it and opportunistic in situations where you have to make a call quickly, you have to make a recommendation quickly, and you have to be ready to, to live by that and, and move. Uh, but no, the, the coaching search was, was one that, you know, we felt was, was critical to, to take our time on, to do our homework on, to speak to a number of individuals directly and on background, really getting to know, um, you know, a, a global group of candidates that, that we were considering. And um, at the end of the day, you know, it, it's you take a step back and you think, who who do I believe in? Who am I ready to you know be in the foxhole with? And and it was abundantly clear that Taylor was that person who I wanted to to dive in with. Why? What'd you like about him? Yeah, Something stood yeah. out to where you thought this can be Absol a yeah. relationship that's not going to be, you know, if thing if you start losing games, that's yeah. when everything falls apart, right? Like yep. the, the front office starts blaming the coach, the coach starts blaming the front office, and and then and that's how it all goes. But you know, when you're when you're going into making a hire, you're thinking, I can work really well with this guy. Something stood out about him. Yeah, but before we even dove into the coaching search, we, we took a step back and we said, well, what are our values? You know, what what's our DNA? What what do we want to be about? What what kinds of people do we want to have here? We want people who are who are low ego. We want people who are are grinders. We want people who are resilient. You know, and 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 really thinking about those values, like Taylor Taylor embodied that. He carried himself the right way. 
everyone who he's worked with, you know, swears by him both from an, an intellect and a, and a work ethic and an organizational perspective. And all of the time that we spent with him, the, the, the more and more time we spent with him, that, that shone through more and more. Right. All right. So then you move into free agency mm-hmm. and you have Tyus Jones is, well, mm-hmm. let's I start with this. You bring back Jonas. You offer him a contract and bring back Jonas, which people did not know Mm -hmm. if that was going to be in the cards. Number one, if Jonas would want to come back, and then if you guys would be interested. Why'd you bring back Valanciunas? Yeah, and and I think that really ties into Tyus Jones as well. But, you know, shifting to this this new, you know, forward-looking generation of of Grizzlies basketball, like, you, you can't just have a bunch of young guys and roll the ball out there and say, figure it out. You know, we, we couldn't be more excited about the young guys that we have, but you need to position them where there's a culture of competition, there's a culture of accountability, and having guys who are wired like Jonas, like Tyus, like Jay Crowder, that was really important to us. You know, it, it's not just vets who are about the right stuff and can sit on the bench and can say, hey, you know, think about this next time. You want guys who are out there, who are vocal, who are setting the tone on the court, who are setting the tone in practice, and in getting to know Jonas, um, I know you've got, you know, you've had him on, you've gotten mm-hmm. to know him as well. Incredible person could, could not be. Uh, and I think our fans gravitated towards Jonas really quickly as well. Yep. Cause he really embodies, I think a lot of what this, what the city is about, what this team is about. The dude's tough. The dude's resilient. The dude just goes out there. He throws his weight around. I mean, just watch that guy set a screen in the space that he created. Like that, that's an important foundational type of person and, 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 foundational types of characteristics that he brought to the table that in just setting the tone for what we want to be about, not to mention the incredible other things that Jonas does on the court, that was important to us. And why was Tyus a target? Yeah, and, and Tyus, you know, he, again, he, heading into a situation where, yeah, put player development is going to be absolutely critical. Having a, a point guard who is pass first, who can run an offense, who can set guys up. I mean, Tyus throwing lobs to, to Brandon Clark. You know, Ty- Tyus making reads, hitting the guy in the week, you know, Marco, you know, for a, an open look in the weak side corner. A guy who, you know, and we, we, our, our hopes for, for Jock couldn't be any higher, but, you know, a, a rookie point guard, you, you want to balance that out with a guy who has a lot of experience running an offense and can come in and can be a, a steadying presence that can also help facilitate development. But now, on the court, off the court, we, we, we couldn't think higher of what, of what Tyus brings to the table. All right, I'm going to burn through these last ones real quick. Yeah. Uh, Marco Guterich, how'd you find him? Yeah, no, I mean, we. We have spent more and more emphasis and, and time just studying the international space. It, it's just an allocation of, of resources and time and energy. You know, we, we did a lot of deep dives as we were heading into free agency and, and thought about it. Is there anyone that we're missing? You know, there's the obvious names that people kick around all the time. But we, we scoured, you know, Europe in particular and said, is there someone there who were we really, you know, feel like could be a little bit below the radar? And Marco can shoot. He, it's not that he, I think there's a lot more than just shooting, but it's not lost on me that sh- shooting is a critical skill that is necessary in today's NBA, and that's something that we're you know we, we believe in, or we certainly believe in his skill set. Do you have a win total that you expect? The we're, we're the, the goal of the Memphis Grizzlies this year is to focus on development to get better every single day. I know Taylor's been saying that as well. There's no win totals. There's none of that. We're, we're focused on getting better. You don't have a number written down. There's, there's Some no guys num- do write there's down no the numbers. numbers. Right? There's no numbers. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and <laughs> I got a number written down, Climbing. What, 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 in, enlighten me. I'm not telling you. 82. <laughs> I'm, not, no. <laughs> I'm not telling you. But there's a couple of these teams you better be better than. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I got mad the other day when they would they have us 26, 25th or 26th. I got a little mad about that. I don't want to be all the way down there. You know what I mean? Look, this is people are super excited about this team. Get to see them tomorrow at the open practice. Get to see them on Sunday for the first time. Um, all right, the last rapid fires. If I go and grab, if I went into your house yep. and jumped on your DVR, yep. outside of sports, what's yep. on there? Ooh. Probably, there's a limited time at this point, but the, the one show that I'm trying to keep up with is Succession, HBO. Succession! Yep. Yep. All right. Great Season. show. Great show. And if you weren't, if you weren't listening to pods yep. or, or something like that or yep. sports talk or whatever in your car, mm-hmm. what music would I find? Um, hip-hop. Hip-hop. So, 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 going to school in the south side of Chicago, it was, it was basically hip-hop only. So are you a big up. Chance guy? Chance, Lupe, early Kanye, that was, that was what I grew up with. How about that? Yep. He's got a hip hop guy. No wonder you get along with Pear so well. <laughs> we had Pear. We, we, we had him rank Kanye albums one day. <laughs> well, we, he, most controversial thing he said. 
What was it? It was late he, registration, he said, he, right? No, he said graduation. He said graduation. Okay. okay. It's very controversial. I'm partial to late, late, yeah, I'll go with late registration. <laughs> late registration is my favorite, too. Zach Kleiman, thanks for coming in, brother. Thanks for having me, Chris. He is Appreciate the GM it. of the Grizzlies. Zach Kleiman will be back after this. Brian Edwards is going to join us. Chris Varnon, show.